Okay, let's talk about everyone's favorite uh, topic, and that is fractions. And, uh, you know, a lot of you right now are probably saying, okay, Mr. YouTube Math Man, just stick to the math, not the comedy. Well, listen, I have to try. I have to get you to relax because fractions do not have to be as difficult as a lot of, uh, a lot of you out there are experiencing, right? Now, most people don't like fractions, okay, and I get that. But what I want to try to do here is give you an easy hack to subtract fractions. And what we're going to be ta uh, talking about actually applies to adding fractions. But I'm going to just be, I'm going to be focusing in specifically on subtracting because when you're subtracting fractions, you also got to be paying attention to a couple other things as well. But uh, if you're interested in learning how to add fractions, I have tons of videos on fractions in my pre-algebra playlist on my YouTube channel. But uh, anyways, we're going to take a look at how to, do, how to do these two problems right here and a couple others here in just one second. But you know, generally speaking, you know, my experience as a math teacher for decades, most students, when they see fractions and they don't have their calculator and they have to deal with fractions, the typical, you know, um, response is like this. It's like, oh, no, fractions, anything but fractions. Well, let's try to get you to relax and be able to not, you know, have any fear of these fractions whatsoever. So stick around for a uh, second, and I'm going to show you this great, nice, easy hack to deal with fractions. Now, I'm just curious before I get into um, how to um, do this particular method to subtract fractions. When you are looking at fractions, what are what's like one of the first thing that comes to mind? Okay, like I'm asking you uh, out there in YouTube land, like what are you thinking about? Okay, you're saying all right, or when I'm talking about subtracting or adding fractions, what's the first thing that you're looking at? Put that into the comments section. I'd be interested to know what your response would be. But uh, we're going to get to this hack here in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. So if you're at the middle school level, high school level, or even college level in terms of mathematics, I can help you pass your course. Now, if you're taking any exam that has math on it, so for example, the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplace, or Alex, CLEP exam, teacher certification exam, nursing school entrance exam, and many, many other type of exams, guess what? All those exams have a dedicated math section on them. So someone out there thinks math is pretty important. I can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, I have a very comprehensive homeschool math curriculum. And if you don't have any math notes, you can use my math notes. I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. But hopefully you don't need my math notes. Um, over decades of teaching mathematics, one thing I've learned is this. Those, those students who take great math notes almost always end up doing excellent in math and the reverse is true. So if you're having a tough time in mathematics, you got to start taking awesome math notes. Okay, so let's get to our problems here. If you think you can uh, do these problems, go ahead and pause the video and um, obviously do them. Um, here, we're dealing with numbers and then here we got some variables in, uh, you know, just to kind of see that this particular hack is applicable not only to fractions with numbers, but also with fractions with variables. Let's kind of get into it now. And let's just do a quick review of probably where uh, most of you are at with fractions, okay? So let's take a look at this uh, problem here. We have 4 sevenths minus 1 seventh. So what is the thing that we have to have in order to subtract fractions? Well, hopefully, if you put this, uh, uh, some of you put this response into your uh, into the comment section of this video, the thing you have to have is you have to have the same the denominator. Okay, so here this denominator and this denominator are the same. So this particular problem right here is all set up ready for us to subtract these fractions. So the way we do that, we just keep that same denominator, 7, and then we subtract the respective numerator. So that would be 4 minus 1. Okay, so we're going to go 4 minus 1, and which of course is 3. So the answer is 3 sevenths. Okay, now if you understand that, well, I must go ahead and give you a little happy face and a check mark and it shows me, hey, you know a little bit about subtracting fractions. This is the same thing um, in terms of having the same denominator when you're adding fractions as well. All right, now this type of problem is, uh, you know, probably easy for most of you out there. Where students really hate fractions, in my experience, is when you have to deal with something like this. Because when I'm looking at this problem, okay, I look at the denominators, and what's the situation? 
well, I have a 7 and a 3. I don't have the same denominators, so now I have to deal with what? The lowest common denominator. And this is where a lot of you are like, oh, no, the LCD. Well, the LCD is actually pretty easy to uh, find with these uh, numbers. Okay, these are small values right here. But what if I had like 13 and 75? Okay, so, you know, some of you out there are like, oh, yeah, it's easy here. Let's just kind of do this. Um, a lot of you out there be like, oh, yeah, the LCD is 21. Yay, you know, I could do this problem. No problem. Well, what if it was like 75 and 31? Well, finding the LCD is not going to be that obvious. Matter of fact, I have a complete dedicated video, multiple videos in my pre-algebra uh, playlist on my YouTube channel on how to calculate the LCD. All right, so finding the LCD uh, can be uh, quite difficult, especially when you're dealing with bigger numbers. But with this particular little hack, this little trick I'm going to show you, kind of bypasses the LCD. We're like, okay, we're not even going to mess with the LCD. We're just going to go right into some steps to, uh, to be able to actually subtract these fractions. So that's why, you know, I love this uh, particular hack. It is one of these things, you, it's just a must-know uh, in mathematics. Now, I want to say one other thing here about the LCD. You need to know how to calculate the LCD. You need to know how to deal with fractions uh, using LCD. So what I'm going to show you doesn't exonerate you from, from you know, uh, your responsibility, if you will, uh, to learn the LCD. So let's do this problem real quick using the LCD, and then I'm going to show you this little hack, and then we'll practice this hack here in a second. All right, so again, the LCD for this particular problem is 21, meaning that we want to have both of uh, our denominators 21, okay, it's L as the LCD. Well, this one is 7, and this one is 3. So how can I make a 7 here into a 21? Well, I just multiply by 3. So 3 times 7, that's 21. But if I multiply the denominator by 3, uh, I have to multiply the numerator, numerator by 3. So 3 times 4 is 12. So what I've uh, done here is I took the fraction 4 7 and I just rewrote it as the fraction 12 over 7, or sorry, 12, 12 over 21. Uh, 4 7 is equal, it's the same as 12 over 21. But here, I don't want 4 7 I want the fraction that has a 21 uh, because that's my lowest common denominator. Okay, so I can change the, the way any fraction looks by multiplying the numerator and denominator by any number I want, as long as it's the same number. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, fix up this fraction. I want a 21, so I have a 3 down here, so I'm going to multiply that by 7. That gets me to 21 over here, so I have to multiply the uh, numerator by 7 as well, so this is going to be uh, 14, okay? Now, uh, I was talking earlier how uh, subtracting fractions, there's kind of a little bit of an uh, extra twist that you have to be very careful with that's um, not as, it's really, when you're adding fractions, it's not so much of an issue, but when you're subtracting fraction, subtracting fractions, you definitely have to pay attention, and that is the following, okay? So now that I have the same denominator, I could just write 21. So I'm going to go 12 minus 14, okay, right here. I just now, I'm ready to go ahead and subtract the numerator, so 12 minus 14, but right here, uh, let's just be very careful. Uh, 12 minus 14 is going to be negative 2, right? So you got to be very careful with this negative sign, this, is, uh, this subtraction sign. You can often end up with a negative value, right? So our final answer will be negative 2 over 21. Okay, so this is an example how uh, a lot of you out there probably would approach this problem using the lowest common denominator. And if you did this, if you, you know, if you approach this problem in this way, then, you know, excellent, okay? And if you're like, no, I'm comfortable, you know, working with fractions using the LCD, so be it. But you want to learn this technique that I'm going to show you. All right, so negative 2 over 21, that is the answer. Let's go back to our problem and uh, take a look at this little shortcut, this little hack. All right, this is one of my favorite things, all-time favorite things in math because it comes in all the, uh, comes in handy so frequently, especially in algebra. Okay, so what, you know, what is this hack? Well, I'm going to show you it right now. I call it the bow tie method. Now, here's like a little bow tie, right? Uh, like a person would wear. So it has this little bow tie shape. So here's how it's going to go, right? This little step. You're going to start in the bottom right. It's always the bottom right, and you're going to multiply this way. Okay, so that's going to be 3 times 4. That is 12. 
Now, because this is a, a subtraction problem, you're going to put a subtraction operator. If this was addition, it would be plus. Okay. Now you're going to go this times this. You always go in this step. Three times four first. That's 12. Seven uh, times two is 14. So that's going to be minus 14. All right. This times this first, and then this times this. And because this is a subtraction problem, there it is. This forms our numerator, and you can put you're going to put that over. Uh, this number, this 7 times 3. Okay, now you're going to multiply the denominators, and that is 21, and there you go. So 12 minus 14 is negative 2 over 21. We are done. You can see it is the same answer. So this is an illustration of the bow tie method, and if you understand this, then you understand this little hack. But let's go ahead and practice this now. Now, the one thing uh, this particular method may uh, do, okay, well, it's a little bit of a disadvantage, is sometimes your answer, you'll need to reduce it, okay? Sometimes the denominator is not the lowest common denominator, so that's the one little thing that you might have to address um, once you use the bow tie method is to kind of reduce your answer down, but sometimes, you know, you do have the LCD, you just don't know, but anytime you're dealing with fractions, you always want to ask yourself, you know, hey, is this fraction fully simplified? But let's go ahead and now practice this. And if you know how to, um, you know, if you understood that little method I just showed you, go ahead and apply it right here. Of course, I'm going to do this uh, in a second. So um, let's go ahead and apply the bow tie method. Now, if you don't want to see it, if you want to just practice yourself, pause the video anytime and kind of play along. But let's go ahead and do this problem using the bow tie method. So it's going to be three times three. Let's put our work right here. Three times three is nine. This is subtraction. Nine minus what? Well, five times five times four, okay, is twenty. That is our numerator. Remember, it's this times this, and then this times this, okay, and subtraction. That's our numerator, and then five times three is fifteen. And now, again, we have to be very careful here, right? This is going to be a negative number, all right? So this would be a negative eleven over fifteen, okay? All right, so if you got that right, then let me go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and a check mark. Nice work, All right? So this is the bow tie method. And again, we don't have to go, oh, what's the LCD? The LCT is 15 and go through all those steps. We can just simply go through this little procedure and come up with our right answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue on and apply the bow tie method to this subtraction problem right here. Now, this one is uh, different because we're dealing with variables, but this, it, it, uh, it works the same way. So let's go ahead and do this. This is 2 times 7 is what? Well, that's 14. And then we have x times x. So what do you think x times x is? Well, it's going to be, and of course, it's a subtraction. Okay, we're going to put our subtraction operator. So it's a subtraction operator right there. So x times x is x squared. Okay. And then our so that's let's go ahead and just kind of make this consistent two times seven so you can see the pattern x times x okay over x times two we would write that as 2x and this would be the answer okay so again you know the, this uh, particular method works with uh, fractions that are just numbers and fractions that in, involve variables as well. That's why in algebra, this technique comes in so handy, you know, and this particular problem right here also, let me go ahead and erase this. You could find the LCD and you need to know how to find the LCD when you're dealing with variables. But this particular method, again, is just one of these things you must know. Uh, and, um, you know, it's just such a great method. And let's go ahead and show you one last problem. Uh, now here, I'm dealing with mixed number fractions. So you're like, well, I want to subtract these two fractions. They're mixed numbers. Well, well, what can I do here? Well, I can go ahead and rewrite each of these fractions into improper fractions. So here, 3 and 1 half, how do I do that? Well, that's 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1, okay, is going to be 7 over 2. Now, if you don't know how I got from 3 and 1 half to 7 halves, uh, you'll want to uh, watch some of my videos on uh, improper and proper fractions and mixed number fractions in my pre-algebra playlist. Or maybe uh, better yet, you just want to sign up for my pre-algebra course. But nevertheless, 3 and 1 half is equal to the improper fraction 7 halves. Okay. Real quick, let me just, I'm using these terms. I want to make sure you understand this. So we have 1 half, 3 halves, and 2 and 1 third. Okay. 
This is a proper fraction because the denominator is bigger than the numerator. The bottom number is bigger than the, uh, the, uh, the top number, okay? The bottom number we call the denominator, and this top number is called the numerator. So I just wanna make sure that some of you out there, you know, are up to speed on all these terms. So this is a proper fraction. Now when the numerator is bigger than the denominator, like so, like three halves, this is an improper fraction. And then when you have like a number and a little fraction like this, this is what we call a mixed number fraction. Okay, a mixed number, let's do it this way, a mixed number uh, fraction. All right, so proper fraction, improper fraction, and a mi mixed number fraction. Okay, so let's go ahead and erase all this. I just sometimes I feel like, you know, maybe some people out there don't, you know, understand these terms fully. But let's go ahead and move forward. So here I have this mixed number fraction. So I'm going to change it into a proper fraction. So this is 5 times 2. That's 10. Plus 2 is 12. So that's going to be equal to 12 over 5. All right. So at this point, I'm kind of ready to go uh, to use my bow tie method. Because my bow tie method, I have to have either an improper fraction, an improper fraction, or a proper fraction, proper fraction. I can't have any mixed number fractions to use this bow tie method. But now I'm ready to go. So this would be 5 times 7. That is going to be 35, okay, minus 2 times 12. That is going to be 24 over 2 times 10, or sorry, 2 times 5, which is 10. That would be my denominator. So 35 minus 24, that is 11 over 10 and that is our final answer so you can see how versatile this bow tie method this hack is it's an excellent excellent tool and it's not only for subtraction it's also for addition okay but i wanted to focus in on subtraction so we kind of highlight you know um kind of like our extra awareness that you can deal with you can get these uh, negative values over here on the right hand side so you definitely need to know the rule your positive and negative number your integer rules how to deal with positive and negative numbers and you need help if you need additional help on that i have tons of videos in my pre-algebra playlist of course i teach this uh, fully in um, my pre-algebra course Okay, so if this video was helpful to some small way, please go ahead and consider smashing that like button. That helps me in a big way. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully uh, you'll consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over 1,000 plus uh, math videos, basic to advanced mathematics. My goal is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. Okay, so I have a ton of content there. If you like my teaching style, I have a lot of uh, different um, videos on various different math topics. Again, basic to advanced mathematics. I try to organize things pretty nicely in uh, various playlists. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.